In this video, we're going to look at the exponential family of distribution, specifically the gamma distribution within the exponential family. Now, this is a follow-up video from a video that we did when we calculated the mean and the variance of a generic exponential family uh, distribution. And uh, we're going to show that those techniques that we developed here also work for the specific distributions. Now in this video we showed that if the uh, density or probably mass function can be written as one of these two forms then it's considered a part of the exponential family. Now there's other forms but these are the two that we looked at. Now this form here is called the canonical form and if you write it in this form then we benefit from this uh, log partition that the derivatives of it end up being the moments of the suspicious statistics and that's what we're going to show in this video so here the the density for a gamma distribution can be written like this now all x alpha and beta have to be positive so there's two parameters alpha and beta in this distribution so now we need to try to transform it into this distribution here and so we need to take the log and the e to this to get it in an exponential form. So this piece here is here. Then we have um, here we have log of x, but the but the x the exponent can be brought out front. And here we have the um, if we take if we take this to the top, it becomes raised to the minus one. And it, it comes out front. So then we have the log of gamma of alpha times uh, beta of alpha. Since it's e, you know each of these are e and to an exponent. You know we can just add the exponents. And I think I skipped a few steps steps here. Not really sure why. But here, since it's the log of a product, you can take it, you can break it into the sum, which is what I do here. And then here, this exponent, we, we, you know, we can add all the exponents, that's what we do. But here, we can factor it out into alpha minus 1 and 1 over beta minus 1 over beta here. And then this vector be log of x and x. So then when you take the vector product of these, you get um, this back, this times that. Anyway, so now this is in the exponential form. So this is a, uh, the function of our data is just 1. And the uh, function of our parameters is this. So it's eta of alpha beta. And this is our function of our data. And this is our log partition. Now, to write this in... Uh, canonical form we have to treat this vector which is this vector we just call it a to 1 and a to 2 and then we change this to so it matches and we the way we do that is this so we're just going to generically call this a to 1 and a to 2 and then the sufficient statistics stay the same but then we have to write this log partition in terms of a to 1 and a to 2 and that's what this is now, if you, so let's do this. So a to 1 is going to be alpha minus 1, which is this part. And a to 2 is going to be 1 over beta, which is this part. So if you plug in those to here, you get this back. Okay? But the beauty of having it in this canonical form is that partial derivatives of this log partition end up being moments of our sufficient statistics and that's what we're going to show so the mean of the first sufficient, sufficient statistic which is the log of x so that is the first derivative of our log partition with respect to a to 1 now our log partition was this so we're going to take the first derivative with respect to a to 1 then so here, the derivative of a log of a gamma, that's just generically called a digamma. 
it's called a digamma function so it's a uh, eight of one plus one it's the digamma so it's the, the the derivative of a log of a gamma the digamma so here we have the log of minus a to two we can take it times one and then times the a to one well taking it times the one it's a constant in regards to a to one but on this one then we just get log of minus a to two back now we plug in the values that we know for a to one and a to two so this is uh, alpha plus one or alpha minus one and this was minus one over beta so you plug in those values and we get digamma of alpha plus log of beta now to find the sufficient or the mean of our second sufficient statistic which in this case is x means you take the partial derivative of our log partition with respect to a to 2 then um, we get this so and, and you can see that this is our log partition and this first piece here there's no a to 2 so it's constant and then over here the a to 1 plus 1 is a constant and we're taking it the, the derivative of the a log of minus a to 2 and that ends up being just uh, over a to 2 so this is this I usually don't skip steps so I'm a little surprised I did um, now we put in a to what we know for a to 1 and a to 2 and we get minus alpha over minus 1 over beta and then the negatives cancel, multiply that up, and you get alpha times beta. And actually, that's what we know as the um, mean of a gamma distribution. So now let's look at the variance of our first sufficient statistic. So it's the variance of the log of x which says take the second partial derivative of our log partition with respect to a to 1 and here we've already taken the derivative once so we're actually going to take the derivative of this and this is constant in regards to a to 1 so that's 0 and the derivative of a digamma is it's called a trigamma function and we just it's just we put a tick there and we mark it now digamma function and trigamma functions are actually functions in R and you can use them so now we plug in what we know about a to 1 alpha minus 1 the ones cancel and we get trigamma of alpha so it's the second derivative of the log of a gamma function is a trigamma now the variance of our second sufficient statistic which is x or so the variance of x is the second partial derivative of our log partition with respect to a to 2 now we've already taken the derivative once with respect to a to 2 and we got this so we need to take the derivative of this with respect to a to 2 and we get this um, now we plug in what we know about a to 1 and a to 2 so this is alpha minus 1 plus 1 that they cancel and leave in alpha and this is minus 1 over beta squared so uh, you take the squared in you invert and multiply and you get alpha beta squared and we know that's the variance of a gamma so it, it is it does work but now we can look at the covariance between our sufficient statistics so the covariance between log of x and x and then from the exponential family we know that that's the partial of our log partition with respect to a to 2 and partial with respect to a to 1 this is the covariance between those two so now we've already taken the derivative with respect to a to 1 and we got this here so now we can just take the partial of this with respect to a to 2 well this is constant and so the derivative is the you know 1 over the log or you know 1 over this and the times the derivative of this and we get and then we plug in what we know for a to 2 and we get beta so that's the covariance between those two 
And, the, and notice that beta is positive, so the covariance is positive between these two. And that makes sense. When you have a large value of x, you're going to have a large value for log of x. And when you have a small value, then you're going to have a small value. So it does make sense that it's positive correlated. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.